Hi everyone, welcome back to Author Story. This is Alexander Lim, your host, and our featured book is Subconscious Power. Use your inner mind to create the life you've just wanted, which you can check out by clicking on the Amazon link in the video description below. The author's our guest, Kimberly Friedmutter, and she is a certified master hypnotist and a certified NLP trainer who works with some of Hollywood's best known luminaries, titans of industry, and politicians from across the United States. So Kimberly, welcome to Author Story. Thank you very much for being our guest. Thank you for having me. Cool. So Kimberly, what made you decide to write Subconscious Power? Was it something you decided because of an aha moment you had, or was it more like a, you know, a slow realization that as time went on? Actually, I was asked to write the book um, because someone had heard and known about my practice uh, over decades of, of uh, I guess, popularity that way. And so I, it occurred to me that it would really be a great idea to get this out of my office and out into mainstream because the, the six principles I utilize are so easy to digest, easy to utilize they're just very they're very tangible actionable things that you can do to make your life so much better and so and so so easy a lot of times we hesitate from easy because we think things are supposed to be complicated but when i really marinated it down i saw that there were these six core principles that had helped my clients over the years and that's what people were responding to and so i thought what better way than to really get it on paper get it out so that everyone can enjoy the easy easy access to your subconscious i mean it's, it's as easy as breathing it really is okay. and you know so that was really the impetus so it did happen first by the seed of thought of this person who contacted me to do it and then the second part was my really following it up with action and really just sitting down and thinking what has made these sessions so successful for so many people and how could we how could we really effectively put that out into the marketplace so everyone could enjoy it right and i'd like to i'd like to confirm you've been practicing hypnotism for decades have you have you not correct Okay, so decades of work and observation have gone into this book then. Right, and actually before I started practicing, I had been a subject of hypnosis for many years prior, just in my own uh, search for, you know, betterment. <laughs> so right. I utilized hypnosis from a lot of different people. I've been hypnotized a lot over the years and really continue to. I obviously practice self-hypnosis. I think I've been in trance for decades, you might say. Okay, <laughs> it's worked okay. out quite fine for me, but I love it. And it's such a comfortable place to be. It's like when you experience and you discover this whole other world, there is nothing like it. The, the closest I could say is like when Johnny, you know, you're little and Johnny's over there daydreaming, staring out the window and the, and the teacher taps on the blackboard and says, you know, wake up, wake up, don't daydream. Right, daydream. Right, right where all the magic happens and that's your greatness right there in that space it's similar very similar to meditation except for the fact that meditation is asking you to zone in and to think and consider breath and other things whereas uh entrancement mesmerization hypnosis is asking you to zone out and think of nothing so that the things come to you that's the primary difference Right. Okay. Okay. So, you know, just to get this out of the way, I mean, I'm sure there are quite a few folks who are listening right now would say, you know, hypnotism is a lot of hoo-ha or things about like, you know, what the heck is subconscious? What's it all about? So first off, what is the subconscious? So the subconscious is the part of you that really is your go-to without even being aware of it. There's two parts of mind. There's subconscious and conscious. Consciousness is your critical thinker, the one that gets you through your day, plans your day, reacts to the phone, you know, beeping and buzzing and all of those things that we need very much so to get through the day. Scheduling and all of your just basic cognitive processes. The subconscious is the one that's really working the immune system and all of the underworkings that are so important running all of your body systems and making sure you know that's the gut the instinct and the intuition and we all know it the dreams emotions all of those things are coming from the subconscious that's the part of us that is really the 
the hard drive. It's the stenographer of everything that we're going through. It's the reason we feel. It's the reason we laugh. We cry. We feel fear. Those things are all coming from the subconscious. Addictions. Um, you know, anytime the hard drive is corrupt, then we just write over it with hypnosis. So, in other words, when you give new direction to the direction that's gone off, much like maps. You know, you plug in with maps, and it says, you know, rerouting, rerouting. Well, that's me. I'm the ultimate maps rerouter. <laughs> Okay, all right. So the subconscious, I mean, a lot of people have will probably have the impression that, you know, the subconscious cannot be accessed easily when we're awake. I mean, maybe in dreams while we're sleeping, but not awake. Is this really the case? Well, it is absolutely in place when we're awake. It's that subtle little tap on the shoulder or that aha moment or the, you know, gee, you might have forgotten to close the garage door or check the oven before you leave the house. It's all of those impulses, all of that instinct that we feel commonly and constantly, I might add. And it's not just a, a woman thing or a gender thing. A lot of women do claim it as women's intuition, but that's absolutely, it's, it's uh, not gender specific. And so when you have those moments, that's the subconscious. One of the things that's fun about the book is that I show people how to find lost items around the house. I show them how to find great parking spaces. Those are every single day practical things that you can utilize. That's the light and fluffy part of, of hypnosis and accessing the subconscious. Because here's the thing, there is a broader knowledge about us and we are energy. So while it may seem woo-woo, it's very much steeped in science and very much studied. It's not a new practice. It's, it's ancient, in fact, but it's just coming back now in this new light and coming out now in this new light. Case in point, the same imprint that did The Secret did this book, uh, Atria Books produced this book. And the idea, and we love our forefathers, the idea that that the information is out there and you summon it to you is a very real thing. My, I contend that it's in your mind. It's been there all of the time. It's you know close and tangible. You can access it anytime you want. And I show you how to do that. With the six principles, it's super, super, super easy because these are all just parts of you that you will so well recognize when you read it. You'll say, ah, oh, that's me, got it. I know that one. I've, I've seen it, I felt it, didn't necessarily know that that's what it was, but so glad to know it now. Okay, okay. So uh, the second the second aspect I'd like to ask about is about hypnotism. So how does hypnotism work? I mean, I'm sure a lot of us would have, uh, you know, an idea like we saw on TV of a magician hypnotizing his assistant and all that stuff. But it really does <laughs> right. Right. Really work. Right, relax enough. Right, if I relax enough, I can play Bach on the piano, yeah, yeah, never yeah. having had a <laughs> So, so what it really is, is hypnosis is super plan and simple. It's a, it's a super relaxed state of being. So in other words, like perfect examples of how you might be hypnotized and not even really realize it is if I said to you, like, why don't you just put down on paper your top five priorities? Those are your hypnotists. What if you put down the top five things that you're attracted to? That's your hypnotist. What if you wrote down your top five musical artists? Those are your hypnotists. Same with entertainment. When you sit in a, in a film and you're watching and you shed a tear, but you know that they're actors, that's your hypnotist. When you're waving your hands and you've got your phone set on the candle flame at a concert and everyone's waving back and forth, that's trance. When you're standing in front of your refrigerator and you forgot what you opened it for and you've been there for five minutes, that's mesmerism. When you stare at a fire and you watch the flames dancing, you drive down a highway and you don't remember the last five miles. So we are constantly in trance. When you're staring at your screen, either on your um, PDA or whatever it is, you are, you're looking at something that is entrancing you. Children playing, a, a cat rolling a, a ball of yarn across the room. All of those things are entrancing, mesmerizing, and those are your hypnotists. Okay, okay. So third, how does uh, hypnotism work to, I know how to call it, influence or affect the subconscious? As you say, you know, like it's a writing over the hard drive. How does it work? <laughs> Right. So when when your hard drive becomes corrupt, and it can be for anything, it can be just false beliefs that are no longer true. You know, one of the things that, that is a common theme is, you know, children being afraid of scary shadows on the wall. Well, as you age, you realize that those aren't scary shadows on the wall. That's simply the light from down below, you know, shining up into your bedroom window. 
and that there really aren't monsters. Those are the things that we grow out of. The other thing is we also grow out of our greatness. By the time we're about eight years old, we have that sense of worldly wisdom. We aren't afraid. We call it like it is. We're not afraid to say the truth. And then we start to learn to play well with others as we unlearn this greatness about us. Things creep in, you know, vulnerabilities and fears. Am I good enough? Can I excel that way? I'm now in a group of larger people who may be more talented or not than me me, you know, all of those things that life offers start to creep in and that's how our hard drive becomes corrupt. Some people might turn to drugs for that. Some people might, you know, and drugs are actually the hypnotism also, uh, the hypnotist because they, they numb and dull you into that sense of, of unconsciousness. Okay. So there are, those people are very much seeking this state. They're just going about it that way. Okay. And so all of those things are when you start to see your hard drive drift off this way and it is a slippery slope and it can happen slow right. and so all I do is I come in and like perfect examples in the book of time after time and you know the book you don't need me certainly but in my practice I overwrite that system by saying you know this is the way that it really is and look your subconscious is for your survival it's day in and day out process and desire is for you to be healthy and survive. And then I take it to the next level with the thrive aspect. If you're surviving, that's great. And I'm so happy to hear that. But if you're thriving, then I've really done my work here. Okay. Okay. Got that. So, you know, I don't want to give away everything uh, in the book because, you know, I, you don't want people to buy it. <laughs> but can you at least tell us, tell us some of the, if not all of the principles that, uh, that you state in the book, you know, that to align our conscious minds with subconscious. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's an easy, and I'd be so happy to, <laughs> to give away all this in the book because I really want people to learn it. Okay. It's, it you know, it's like, like and I liken it to driving down the freeway. If, if we're all going the same speed and we all know what's happening and we're all aware and we're all our greatest, then we can all go, you know, quickly and without incident. It's the one that, you know, veers and tries to swerve off and doesn't really know how, how great it can be that, that kind of slows down the rest of us. So by all means, so the, so the first principle is to come into accountability. And that's really just look at where you are, who you are, and how you are. And that, you know, that can be tricky for some. You have to look at warts and all. So sometimes it's not pretty and that's okay because we have to start from somewhere. But it's actually the contrast of where you're headed that I'm after with that one. The next is to tap into the subconscious. And so I literally show readers and listeners how to do that because the beauty of it is that it's there and you know it. I mean, every Everyone dreams, you know, when you dream and you wake up and I'm sure this has happened to you many times where you wake up and you're either huffing and puffing or panting and your blood pressure is up and your heart rate is up and nothing happened to you really, you're laying in bed, but that's how important your psyche is. That is how powerful is if you think it's happening, it's happening for you. All right. It's remarkable that way. So this teaches you, you know, how to really hone that in and get control of that. The next would be, do you move toward or away? And this is basically looking at your orientation. Are you someone who moves away from the things you dislike? Or are you someone who moves towards the things you do like? I can see patterns in people in their life, and you'll see it for yourself when you read it, is that we do do that. And so if you're constantly unhappy with these choices you've made, chances are you're moving away from the things that, that you don't like. You know, even bacteria moves away from negative stimuli, just right. so you know. So it's not, <laughs> it doesn't take a, an Einstein to, to get that part of it, but we do want to move toward the things and then we're happier. Right. The next would be judge thyself and thy neighbor. We have gone way off base when it's come to judging what's good for us or not. Judging has become this bad thing in our society globally. And, and I don't mean that kind of judging. Do you look great in that outfit or is that the right color you're wearing today? Not at all like that. What I mean is good for self, ecological for self. And can we, can we move together with momentum? with judgment that way. The next would be give to get, another touchy, touchy subject. I like to hit on all the things that, that we've come to believe that aren't necessarily correct anymore. And we keep just believing them and it's amazing to me. But th that being give to get is that energetic systems are symbiotic, they have to be. Even the dying tomato that falls off the plant gives back in its death to the plant that's coming as fertilizer. It rots and it becomes food for that plant to right. raise another tomato. Right. So even 
even in that, it's not a judgment call. It's not a PC thing. It just happens. It's nature. What I love about the subconscious is it's 100% organic, 100% natural, 100% sustainable, and 100% private if you choose to keep it that way. It's a beautiful thing. And then the following would be playing big. You know, many times we find great honor in not going for it, or we find excuses and you know, apathy to action is a big exercise in the book. And all these are quick, super, super quick, simple exercises, but that's a big one because we have a lot of failure to launch right now. And I think a lot of parents would agree that, um, you know, we're in this state of it's okay to kind of hang. And really, you don't want to miss those that perfect timing. And you don't want to miss the greatness that's waiting for you. And that's a lot where it does attune with the secret and soul spirit. And those parts are also in the book. However, it's a very real thing. You've got to act behind that energy to do so. Four pillars of self-care, very important that you're taking care of the physical body so that you can go that distance. Once the mind is set right, you're going to just fly and you're going to have the energy to do it. And so I say, okay, let's engage those wings and get going. So one of my favorite things, not to keep going on and on about it, but one of my favorite things is how to get out of drought. And drought is when we are perceiving lack in some way. So of the three types of drought, there's passing drought, which I call hair nato when you have a bad hair day or you had a little fender bender or, you know, things just aren't going your way that day or so. And then there's there's lingering drought, which is, you know, maybe you've had a death in the family or you've had a job change that, you know, was a surprise to you or some kind of a sickness or disease or something that's happened that's just thrown you off now for a couple of months. And then of course, habitual drought. And we all know those folks that just can't seem to get out of their own way. And that's very important. And I show readers how to do that and how to get out of that. It's very important. Okay, okay, cool. All right, great. So um, in, uh, get it, going back a little bit, because you talked about the eight year old self. Um, you, 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 I think you're, you mentioned, me or Nan had mentioned that subconscious is uh, our authentic self. We're in touch with us as, as children. But why do you say eight year old in particular? Because that's the time of life when we have it all, we know it all, and we're not afraid to express ourselves. And from that point on, life literally unteaches us our greatness. And it's something that we feel. It'll be so interesting when you think of something. I do have a process in here. It's called Tonkas and Tutus. And it's really connecting back with that because, Alex, we've become super, super caustic and sarcastic and cranky and all of those things. I don't know if you've noticed it growing up, but in, in, you know, now and having these discussions with so, so, so many people is how to get back to happy and how to touch base with that part of you that got it then. And it's okay to have that part of us be okay. That's a very, it, there's a lot of efficacy in, in that mindset, a lot of uh, progress in that perception and in that shift. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Great. Got that. Okay. So, um, j just just for for the for the sake of our listeners, just a little s quick sneak peek at something. You know, maybe we can all do a short exercise, something like that. Uh, can you like walk walk me? Well, heck, walk all of us through one of these short exercises that maybe we can do for in a couple for a couple of minutes. Oh, sure. Yeah, there's a real fun one uh, that I like, which is engaging in your periphery. So if if a lot of people have sleep issues or you wake up in the night, you know how you think a thought and that thought begins to think. And sometimes that is in the middle of the night. Yeah. And when that happens, the best way to go about, you know, you don't have to count sheep anymore. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, the newest, yeah, the newest thing is to diffuse your, your vision. So all you do with your eyes closed is you literally, of course, if you're driving, when you're listening to this, you will not want to do this. But all you do is you focus on a spot in front of you. And this is with your eyes closed. You can also do it with your eyes open. It's many, many uses for this one. But your eyes are closed just for argument's sake that we're having trouble sleeping. And you're staring at a spot, just imagining a spot in front of you that you're staring at. Eyes are closed. And let that vision diffuse off to the sides of that spot. So this is peripheral vision that you're engaging while your eyes are closed. And the beauty of this is that you literally diffuse your focus on that which has kept you up and that you're thinking of. So what happens is all of those worries, it's impossible to continue and carry on a negative 
a state of mind, which, you know, any kind of busy work in the middle of the night would be considered that, right. or a negative emotion, you know, being afraid, being scared, being nervous, whatever the issue is, it's impossible to connect to that when you're in peripheral vision. That is the single most beautiful exercise, easy to do anywhere. You can read in that exercise or read while you're doing that exercise with your eyes open, literally look at the page and diffuse your eyesight. And then all of a sudden, all of that information will go to you. And then you do that same exercise to recall that information. It's like this super highway right into your memory block. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. That's a, that's a great sampler right there. And, if, and of yeah, course, they actually call it the learning state and they call it a uh, performance state too and training state. There's a lot of different names for it, but the beauty of it is that it literally, it's like a sponge. You take in the information and then you go back into that state to, you know, call that up again, to bring up that file when you're ready. All right. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, um, let, let's say Kimberly, you came across someone who's, you know, in the blast about his or her life, you know, wants to change, is willing to do the work, and you only had enough time to tell that person one thing about creating the life they want through, through the principles in your book. What would be that one thing you would tell them? Actually, it's one thing I would ask them. I would say, I would say, what is it that you want? And what is it that's keeping you from that? Because in the keeping you from that, everybody knows the truth of who they are. Everybody knows. So, for example, a lot of the conversations will start out like this. I know you don't know, but if you did know, what would it be? Because when you ponder that, you have all of the answers. It's very similar to the exercise in the book about finding lost items. When you connect with where, let's just go to that, I, I guess is the best thing, way to describe it or explain it. Okay. When, you, when you connect with that thing that you cannot find and you get out of the state of needing to find it and you get into the state of enjoying it, remembering it, feeling it, smelling it, you know, all of the things that it could provide, whatever it is. The perfect example in the book about one of my clients who lost a strand of pearls and she she believes she lost it it was misplaced but she believes she lost it and here's the thing the subconscious is recording everything so nothing is really lost it's misplaced and in the state of the find is a frant kind of a frantic uh fanaticism of i've got to find i've got to find i've got to find that's not the location in the brain that will find it the location that will find it is the part of you that remembers and connects to it. So I did a simple exercise with her. She was frantic when I tell you. I She was leaving Hawaii, coming back to the mainland, and she was not getting on the plane without that strand of pearls. And right. she was really, really, really upset about it. And when you've lost some things that feel urgent to you, you know, regardless of our, our feelings about it, it's urgent to you. Yeah. And so I walked through the exercise. I said, okay, so let's tell me about the pearls. How are they? What do they look like? Are they beautiful? Are they amazing? Feel them. Where did you get them? Getting her back into the sense of the pearls, not the loss, correct? Yeah. So she says, oh my gosh, they're amazing. Da, da, da. Last time I wore them, I wore them with this beautiful Missoni dress. I said, tell me about that. You know, what did you order? What did you eat? Where did you go? Again, getting her mind to go back to the placement of when she was enjoying the pearls because the pearls are somewhere and the brain knows where they are. Right, and right. so... Sure enough, she said, oh, I had them on with this dress and then I came home and I remember thinking I can't put them in the safe because pearls need to breathe. They're a living organism. Right. And so I need to put them someplace where they can breathe. And then what? Oh, you know, I think I had a cup of tea and then I took off my dress. Well, the dress is a Missoni knit dress. I don't know if you're familiar with the brand, but they, they knit things. So she didn't want to hang it. So she rolls it up to put it in a drawer. And she said, oh my gosh, I remember putting my pearls in the dress to roll them up because it was soft and they wouldn't get scratched or damaged. Sure enough, she ran to the drawer. While she had looked in the drawer all of these times before, because she really had searched everywhere, all right. she looked at the drawer and she saw the dress. But until we went back in her memory bank and really went through that night, she wasn't able to remember that she had put the pearls in there because it was a one-off for her. Okay. So you can see where the answers lie. It's not in the critical consciousness of the day-to-day -day movement. It's in the subconscious that's really the PowerPoint of all of us. Right. Okay. Well, great. 
fantastic, fantastic. Okay, great. And now we all know where her pearls are. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yay! <laughs> and I'm sure people can find more than pearls if they if they find what they, what they read in your book. <laughs> right. What used to be a strand of pearls is yeah. now a pearl of wisdom. <laughs> right. Right. Okay, so Kimberly, in the last minute or so of this interview, are there any last words of wisdom you'd like to share to maybe inspire some of our listeners? You know, I, I really, really, really hope that people will learn either through this book or any way possible, the power that they have in their own mind. It's so funny because people will say so often, you know, oh, it's all in your head, you know, to other people like, you know, oh, it, I'm sure it's all in my head. And I say, exactly. That's exactly where we want it to be. This wealth of resource is in you. It's your divine right to utilize it. It's like if I put this beautiful piece of machinery on everyone's desk, either at home or at the office, and I said, this is my gift to you. You have this beautiful piece of machinery here. And if you decide to read the manual, which is exactly what this book is, then you too can utilize this piece of machinery that not even science can recreate. You know, a neuroscientist or a neurosurgeon cannot operate on your subconscious. Nothing can touch it. Nothing can, can do anything about it but you. And all you have to do is just plug into it, and it's the most magnificent piece of machinery you will ever ever known or have access to ever and with that I just I just hope and my fingers are crossed that people will decide to really get in touch with that and utilize it it's, it'll make your life <laughs> so easy if I could just say I have thousands of examples of just how it makes it so beautiful and easy and life doesn't have to be this battle so we don't have to make it one we have everything we need right in our own mind right okay well, great words right there so in closing, the book is Subconscious Power. Use your inner mind to create the life you've always wanted. The authors are guest, Kimberly Friedmutter, and you can find her book on Amazon. So Kimberly, thank you very much for being the author's story. It was very enlightening speaking to you. It's my greatest pleasure, and I was told that it's number one on Amazon now, so I'm just thrilled about that. Oh, fantastic, and uh, you know, great, uh, great success story. <laughs> thank you. All right. So everyone, uh, by all means, check out Subconscious Power. And also go ahead and check out some of the other books and authors whom we've already covered on Author Story. And subscribe to our channel if you want. So see you guys all next time on Author Story, where we speak to another great author about another great book.